So what is up, ladies and gentlemen? It's the Great Dansby, and we are back with some more ranked season gameplay. And this is actually a two-for-one special, as both of my opponents quit prematurely. This first guy actually quits extremely, extremely early. And I was kind of upset, because look what we're playing. We're playing at good old Shea Stadium. Do I miss Shea Stadium? For those who do not know, I'm a very big, die-hard Mets fan. As Trey Turner starts out with a leadoff double here. Yes, I'm a die-hard Mets fan who is a national shortstop leading off in my team. It doesn't matter because it's Diamond Dynasty. I just want to win, so you put your best players out there. Shea Stadium, you know, it was a dump, but it was our dump. It was our dump. I have lots of great memories at Shea Stadium, so it felt nice just to see good old Shea Stadium. So here I actually steal third base. So we start with a double. I decide to steal third because I think he's throwing us junk. I'm like, whatever, we can always try to manufacture a run early, and that's exactly what we do. He's got no chance with the infield playing back to throw out Trey Turner. And just like that, we start the game off out with a run. We had a double, a steal, and a uh, ground out, and there, bada bing, bada boom, there is a run. So pretty much what I was doing in this game was I was trying to take advantage of this guy's aggressiveness and try to mix up my pitches. Um, one thing I've realized is a lot of people in this game, they are really, really swing happy, especially the, the players that are like a little lower skill level. I'm sure as I get closer to the World Series, I think um, by the end of this video, you're going to see my rating is a 723. Um, 17 and 3 on online ranked play. I haven't played any more games since the, ga the second game that you're going to see here. Mainly, I've been doing um, some CPU missions and some... I did a little Battle Royale. I did record it, so I'm going to post that. As well, unfortunately, we only managed, I think, to get seven wins on that BR. Um, couple of tough losses. It happens. It is what it is. I wasn't too pleased about it. We actually faced one monster, though. One monster guy who was actually just about in the World Series division. And he was a really, really tough opponent. It felt really good to actually beat him. But you guys will see that within the uh, next upcoming days. So, pretty much what I've been doing right now. So, he had Catfish Hunter here. You just gotta kind of want to not only study the player that you're playing against, but you want to, you know, know the cards a little bit, and I know with Catfish Hunter, his Pernines aren't amazing at all, but his stamina is fantastic, so what I wanted to do was try to get him to waste some pitches, which he was doing, he was throwing a lot of junk, he wasn't really using his fastball, and his fastball's not very hard too, so pretty much when I'm facing someone like Catfish Hunter, I kind of do the reverse thing, I kind of wait for the breaking balls and adjust to the fastball, because the fastballs probably aren't going to surprise me unless he throws one really high up in the zone and I'm looking for a breaking ball, you know, down low in the zone. So I kind of go the opposite way, rather than, um, <clears throat> you know, look for a fastball, just a breaking ball. And I don't send the runners here, because I have bases loaded with nobody out with my 8 hitter, and my 8 hitter is freaking Christian Yelich. So since my 8 hitter is Christian Yelich, you know, it's pretty much having like a 3 hitter, because that's really what he is, especially against right hand pitching. So I can have another 3 hitter in there. I Unfortunately, I'm late on this, uh, looks like a slider. I was actually waiting for it, and I guess I waited a little too long, but we it is deep enough to get the run, and Matt Holliday, he had in left field, does not have a fantastic arm by any means. I think it's it's maybe a little above average for a left fielder, but it's not really good at all. So here we're using uh, Phil Hughes here. We decide we could swing away, but I didn't want to ground to a double play, so I figured we'll just try to bunt him over, which we were able to do, and bunting is actually really not, really not easy in this game. I haven't really figured it out yet. I have difficulty uh, even sacrifice bunting. Which, you know, I think is a little silly. It's a little too difficult, but I understand why it's difficult. Because last year it was super easy to get bunt hits with, like, anybody. You get bunt hits with guys with, like, 14 speed. And he makes a wild pitch here, and he I'm going to make him pay for it. Even with um, 50 speed, Sanchez is able to score. So that's another run right there. I didn't have to worry about uh, batting him in. But I think I actually wind up hitting this one in right here with Trey Turner. Anyway. Yeah, so honestly, both runs were scored anyway, and he's out. He's like, peace out, motherfucker. No more for me. So, <laughs> he didn't last very long. Two innings, not even. An in, in inning plus. You know, and he was he had enough. He had enough. So, I was ranked higher than him. Significantly higher. A few few more wins. So, I, I'm on a nice win streak, actually. I haven't lost the game in, in quite a while. Facing this guy, who, was a, who also has a stacked squad. He's got the uh, breakout Ken Griffey Jr. car, which I was a little scared. And he's got a really... And he's played a lot of conquests. And we have to face yet, yet again... Catfish Hunter, two games in a row. I felt comfortable with this. He's got a decent record. He's 25 and 12. So I fit okay. He probably has an idea of what he's doing. So what I like to do early on is, in games is just kind of be patient. 
because I know a lot of players, especially players that have guys that don't throw hard, they kind of like to throw junk and go towards the corners a lot and don't really want to give you much to hit. They want to try to, you know, try to make yourself get out here. So actually here, he actually makes a pretty decent pitch. It may be a little fat. I actually took it because it was it was a changeup. And the up makes a bad call, and we're on base here. And of course we have our man, Freddie Freeman here. And with Freddie, I'm looking to go yard pretty much every time against the righty, especially when he's playing up, which Freddie Freeman was playing up this day. This day he had like 99 contact and like 94 power or vice versa, something like that. It was just ridiculous. So David's on. I don't know why. You know, he, I know David's a really good card, but to be honest with you, I'd rather be facing uh, David than facing Freeman against the right-hand pitcher. But you know, he decided that he wanted to pitch around David and not and and go after Freddie Freeman, which I think was a mistake, and I make him pay for it. Make him pay for it. I was waiting on that low pitch for whatever reason. I jack shots with Freddie Freeman on low pitches all the time. So, I'm pretty sure I had good contact on this. I think I got yellow contact, but I was right on it. I was right on it. Yep, right there. Now, I don't feel bad about going deep on uh, on Catfish Hunter right there. So, we right just like out of the bat, we have a 2 nothing lead on this guy. So, with this guy, I, I was actually surprised David didn't get to that ball because David's fielding stats are pretty damn good in this game. Way, way above average. He's a fantastic fielder, like gold glove caliber fielder in this game. Because that year was just amazing for him, 2007, all around. Should have been the MVP in my... Honest opinion, 8.3 war that year, only second to Albert Pujols, and Albert Pujols finished like 10th. And I don't know what exactly what happened here. In real life, I would have easily been able to throw him out, but they just take forever to throw the ball in this damn game. And I guess he just assumed I was going to throw to first, and he wanted to see if he can score. So what turned out to be a bad play for me worked out in my favor. We got a really silly out on this guy when he had a runner in, would have had a runner in scoring position. Actually, a runner on third. With less than two outs, so he, he made a boo-boo. Actually, no, it would have been, it would have been two outs, because I probably would have thrown out the guy first. That, that's what he was actually assuming. So, this guy actually had, like like you saw in the beginning, he had a really good lineup. So, what I was trying to do was, like with Reggie Jackson right here, I was going to try to bust him inside. And I know that you, you've you been seeing a lot, I know I see it all the time, a lot of like these ridiculous, like, just late jam shots that get ripped. As Murphy, speaking of ripping, rip one, rips one into... The gap. And Daniel Murphy, this is actually his debut online ranked season game. I was using him a little bit in Conquest, so he does have a little bit of statistics, as a lot of my players do. I'm trying to use different players. Look at this play by Matt Carpenter behind the bag, robbing robbing Gary Sanchez of a of a of a RBI single. I really thought he was gonna get through there. At least I moved the runner over. You're making productive outs, but he made a fantastic play there, which I did not expect him in there. That happens sometimes. Like I said, I was with Catfish Hunter is pitching. I kind of try to adjust the fastball, and those are pretty much the only fastballs I'm not going to be able to get to occasionally are the ones that are, like, really up in the zone if I'm waiting for a breaking ball. In hindsight, I probably should have just let it go, but it didn't come back to hurt me, and we have Sanchez once again two games in a row, pretty much an identical situation, able to score, and it wouldn't have mattered anyway because we were, we were going to hit him in regardless. Just that's, like, deja vu kind of, isn't it? Isn't it? Only I think it was Trey Turner that knocked him in the next time. So, this guy was, he was pretty aggressive, so I was trying to just work off the corners, and I was kind of trying to throw him slow stuff, because he was trying to gear up for fastball, so I just kind of want to change his way of thinking, and make him think that I'm just only throwing, you know, breaking balls and, and slow stuff, and throwing them different parts of the zone, throwing them out of the zone, or just out of the zone, um, occasionally throwing them through strikes, that's the thing too, you do have to mix in your secondary pitches as stri for strikes, occasionally. You don't want to do it too often, you know, like that. I don't think that was that bad of a pitch, if I remember correctly. Let's see if we can see the feedback there. Um, no, we don't. We can't see the feedback. I cut it out. But you know, he rips this ball, and he he. I, I will say he hit in some bad luck in this game. Some bad luck. Um, but you know, so did so did I actually, and I and I'm still able to uh, make him quit. And David Wright, guys, I can't say enough about it. I know he's really, really expensive to get right now because Syndergaard's through the roof right now and Cespedes is a pretty high card too, but I was lucky enough to, to buy Syndergaard when he was like at 56k when I had a ton of stubs from when I had sold um, Altuve. So, you know, I was really lucky with that. So, really, the Mets collection didn't cost me as much as it's going to cost people now, but if you have a chance to get the um, the epic missions done, and this, this is actually one of those BS hits. I know I was late on this one. I was directly on the ball. I know that, but that ball was rocketed, and I did power swing on this one. But that shouldn't matter. And I don't know what the hell happened with the with the controllers there. I sent him to second, and then he went really late. I don't know. It was really weird. 
But if you could see, look, I was just late. And I did power swing, but I don't think that should matter. If I was just late, I shouldn't be able to rocket one in the gap like that. I mean, maybe hit a single or something like that. And I just cost myself a run there, too. Unfortunately, because I wasn't able to get Freeman over to second for whatever reason he just decided to freeze. I don't know, maybe uh, I accidentally hit the L1 button. I'm not sure. But something happened. And I, <laughs> what it is, really uh, not so sure. So we got Daniel, Daniel Wright, da uh, <laughs> Daniel Murphy, I'm combining players here, slapping an opposite field, single to keep the inning going. And who do we got up here? I think we got Yelich up here right now. That's the one thing I don't like about doing YouTube videos with this like strike zone camera is sometimes you don't realize who's up at the plate. It was Yelich right there who rips a single up the middle. And Yelich is a fantastic card to, to guys. He's pretty cheap. You can get him for like 8K, something along those lines. I would say... Pick them up. Any any gold players that play up a lot, take a look at that, guys, and pick those guys up. Especially if it's a if it's a spot where bomb, a spot where bomb. Damn, people gotta stop pitching to David though. You can't give me these meatballs right over the plate like that. He's just a monster, guys. Get this David Wright card, okay? I don't care. Get Syndergaard, and once you get Syndergaard, the rest are gonna be a lot easier going. Cespedes rings this one into the the gap. Also, I could tell this guy was getting you know really frustrated. This guy's not used to losing. Like I said, he's like a 750 win percentage on online play. When you have a 750 win percentage on online play, you're not used to uh, getting tagged like this. And uh, like this one, this is one where they actually said something like, oh, it's a missile out to center field. But off the bat, I knew it was going to get caught. So, I mean, I don't know what it is sometimes. Sometimes the game seems to... So it looked like he actually was not right on that one. He was uh, kind of off it. But who knows? He had the yellow contact, not the green contact. But I don't know. Sometimes, like... The game seems to not reward you when you, like, make really good centered green contact. And that's a, this that, that pitch right there is a pitch I like a lot, which is the, the fastball, especially to a right-hand uh, hitter when you're a right-hand pitcher on the outside low corner. A lot of players just assume when there's two strikes, you're not going to throw them a strike. So if they see anything low in the zone, they kind of just take it and expect that's not going to be strike. So you can get a lot of guys looking like that. And uh, Hughes is not a great pitcher to strike guys out with, but I do think I'm able to... You know, probably strike out like seven per nine innings with him, which I don't think is that bad considering his case per nine isn't that good. You know, it's not like a Syndergaard who has like, you know, a really high, you know, case per nine or Max Scherzer or any of those stars. And, you know, to tell you the truth, the, the starters in the game, oh, this was ridiculous. So I was actually just trying to steal the base with Turner, and for whatever reason, he got an awful jump. And since Tony Gwynn at the plate, who's a great hit and run guy, I was like, screw it. Let's try to hit and run. And although I hit it right at him, you know, he messed up and we got runners on first and third, just like that. And this, this stunk. I was waiting for that exact pitch, outside, high, fastball, and I dipped my PCI right underneath it. I, I actually smacked my forehead right after that happened. I was like, no! No, 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 no! Like Michael Scott in, uh, <laughs> in the office. No! No! That's exactly what I felt like because I, I, that was the pitch I wanted. I got it exactly where I wanted it. My timing was good, but what happened? I got under it, and I watched it back like in slow motion in Sony Vegas, and I could see that my dipped my PCI right underneath. You know, I kind of second-guessed myself though it was a slider or something. I don't know. I don't know because that's ex exactly the pitch I was looking for, and I did absolutely nothing with it. So I want to know if you guys are still experiencing like those really, really weird, like that Freddie Freeman shot where you get jammed inside and just rocket one. And Freddie Freeman, again, just takes him deep. Like, I can't say enough about Freddie Freeman. Freddie Freeman and David Wright, my three and four hitters, they it's like they can't, I was like perfect on that one. They just can't be beat. And then yeah, this guy concedes and uh, that's it. That's two straight wins. That's going to leave me off at a 723 rating. Guys, I do plan on streaming possibly today if not today maybe tomorrow i want to start streaming some ranked season games now that i have all of them uploaded off my hard drive i can do that again all right guys do me a favor if you did enjoy this commentary please leave a like and if you're new to the channel and you like what you're seeing want to think about giving me a little subscription and hopefully soon later